And this is a game that a ton of people love in the community, and it's no surprise because the publisher and the designers have been very active doing their due diligence, playtesting the game quite a bit, listening to their audience, and generally just doing an excellent job of being involved in the community. And since they're doing all those things, it's no surprise that they're able to create quite a hit here. And proof of that is that this one is also our Discord pick of the week. And if you don't know what that is, we do run a vote every single week for the games launching that week so that we can see which games people are most excited for. And if you've noticed that there's been a few weeks lately where there's been no Discord pick of the week, well, the reason for that is that there's also a vote option to vote for no game if there's none that really stand out to you. And that is a common option because not everyone is buying a game every single week, but in order to be the Discord pick of the week, not only do you have to beat votes for every other game, you also have to beat the votes for that category as well. But more votes are always better, so if you're interested in getting a sneak peek of the games to come each and every week, and also getting involved with the voting there, I do have a link to our Discord down below. And it's just a great place where you can hang out and also keep track of any new games as we discover them, rather than waiting until I post these videos. But back to the task at hand here, the Isofarian Guard is a narrative campaign game for two players, where each player is going to be controlling their own character, or you can play it solo by playing two of the characters yourself. And each character is going to have their own set of stats and you can upgrade them with different gear and items as well as weapons and each of them are also going to have unique ability cards but pretty much every single aspect of the character can be upgraded and even some of their gear can be combined together or combined with other resources that you might find in order to augment those as well all of this will be tracked on your own personal player board but there's also a separate skill tree that players will be able to navigate throughout the game in order to unlock other benefits and resources as the game goes on and this is a narrative campaign game that's going to be providing a story as players play throughout the game, offering branching storylines and different opportunities for players to discover more about their characters, or the world, or even take on various side quests. Players can use the provided campaign booklet to read through the entire narrative themselves as they discover it, or instead they can use the really really well done foreteller app that will just narrate everything for you, which is a great option if you just want to stay focused on the gameplay elements of the game and have the entire narrative taken care of by a professional. And the way that this game actually plays is by players exploring the main map, and the whole map is going to be covered with a bunch of different locations, each identified with a number as well as an associated color. The number is just an identifier for that location, but it is used to look up all sorts of different information, such as what sort of enemies might spawn there, what sort of narrative events could occur, or even which associated minimap you're going to be pulling out when you visit that location, because each of these locations can also have a smaller zoomed in map where players will be able to visit to find different side quests or to advance their main quests if they have to visit that spot. Each of the colors associated with each of the different locations also has a different meaning. The red ones mean that you can't visit that location or move through it until you've reached a certain part in the campaign that allows you to do so, while other colors might have no effect at all or require you to draw a token from the event bag. There's a few different tokens that you can draw from the event bag with each of them either causing you to fight a different difficulty of enemy or they might just allow you to avoid the enemy completely or to choose an enemy that you want to battle. It's not always bad to fight an enemy because you will earn different bonuses and resources if you are able to defeat them. You could use that to upgrade your character or complete different objectives that you might be trying to complete for different side quests or even the main quest. If you decide to fight an enemy or if you just get forced to fight an enemy, you're going to be grabbing that enemy's card and putting it on the combat board along with their associated combat deck. Players will then just alternate turns with the enemy and whenever it's the enemy's turn, you're just going to be drawing a card from their combat deck and then resolving whatever effects it indicates. Each enemy in this game is very unique with their own set of stats, their own combat deck, as well as their own pool of energy that they're going to be drawing from that's going to limit the attacks that they can perform. As players play the game, they will get more familiar with the different enemies as well as their attack style because each of the enemies will have different abilities that they'll be able to perform and different effects or ways to damage the players. But when it is the player's turn during a combat, they do always have the option to retreat. And if they take that option, they're not going to get any rewards for the battle. And the enemy is also going to get one more turn. But if they choose to stay and fight, this is where all your players' stats and gear and effects are all going to come into play because this is a bag building game. You're going to be adding tokens to a bag depending on your character's stats as well as any additional tokens granted from your gear or items or any special effects that might be affecting you during the battle. 
You'll then be drawing a number of tokens from the bag and then spending those along with your energy supply to activate the various abilities and effects and cards that you might have available to you. Each of these does have different requirements, which means that you'll have to draw certain tokens in order to activate them, but usually you will have a few different options on your turn and the tokens can be used in a variety of ways. And the combat continues like this, alternating back and forth, and if you're able to defeat the enemy, then you will be rewarded for that, which could come in the form of additional gear, or resources, or opportunities to level up your character. In addition to the main board, players also have access to their fort board, where they'll be able to visit and acquire unique resources that are only found on that specific board, and players will be able to upgrade this by building different buildings, which will create a bit of an economy and also create other opportunities and actions that will be available to the players. But when players are exploring the main map, they'll always know where to go next in order to continue the main quest for the campaign because there will be a campaign marker located at that location, but players don't have to go straight there and this is an open world game, so players could explore the areas around it, visit different towns, find different side quests, and gear up and improve their characters, and come and continue that quest when they're ready. But like I said, certain locations are only going to become accessible at certain parts in the main campaign, so you will have to complete that in order to get full access to the map. And there's also going to be certain items and special gear that you'll only find specifically through the campaign. The game continues like this with players playing through the campaign, unlocking those different areas and making decisions as the game goes on. And when you do reach the end, the success or failure of your adventure will be revealed. The second edition of the game does make quite a bit of refinements to the main rules, also adding and streamlining a few mechanisms. The contents of the box and the books and the resources are also going to be slightly shifted around in order to present that information a little bit easier. And if you do already own the game, you don't necessarily need all of this, but there will be an upgrade pack as well. And it looks like there will be some additional content revealed as the campaign develops, so even if you do already own the game, you might want to back this one just to grab that additional content. As always, if you're interested in this one, I do have a link to the campaign in the description below, and of course you can follow along to get notified.